Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to show you everything that you can do with masking tape in the band repair trade. Before we get to that, we have a hashtag for you. There it is, masking tape rules. Make sure you take that and put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up this year and into 2024. We also have a special giveaway for next week. We have a few of these... Oleg Original Equipment Pro Sax Enhancers. Yes. These are items that have been discontinued, and we found these in a box. Tucked uh, away um, somewhere the, deep in the dark <laughs> oubliette of the Sax Pro Shop. That's right. So if you need a palm key riser, uh, these are the all-metal uh, palm key risers that have a set screw that fit them onto the, uh, the instrument there. So we're going to be giving away that next week. So make sure you take masking tape rules. Oh, there it is. Put that in the comments of the video. And of, during the course of this video, we might sp uh, start some sort of creative juices with your masking tape ideas. So make sure you put those in the comments below as well. That'll give you a chance to win a 15% off discount on any of the courses that we have coming up. And we do have one coming up in September. This is the Advanced Saxophone course. A couple of people have signed up for that. Thank you so much. We have, a, well, I think, four more spots left. Yep. So... Uh, check that out in the music, uh, musicmedic.com education section, and we will take care of you there. Also, an engraving course coming up in October, and then we have some uh, other courses coming up in 2024. Ryan's going to talk about dry fitting Ooh. in the stream today, and so I wanted to point out that on February 8th, we have our virtual uh, day course dry fitting uh, and padding for saxophone. So, Ryan, let's get into this. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, well. Uh, the sax smackdown. Save oh, the oh, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. The sax smackdown is where we bring technicians, the hottest and sexiest technicians from around the globe, uh, are going to come to musicmedic.com and we are going to have a bunch of clinics and probably a panel discussion as well as some vendors so it's a very exclusive event. libations good times hearty conversations it's going to be very good so if you are yes. in the saxophone world uh put that on your save a date uh yes. calendar that's going to be february 23 24 and 25 ish it's going to be right in that range i'm not sure yeah. if it's going to be two days three days one day but that is the weekend that we're going to have the event so put that on your calendar and let's save the date save the date so ryan we've got a bunch of different yes. types of masking tape masking tape uh, tips tips and or tricks and so the, the idea for this video came from just working with masking tape throughout yes. the years well, yes yes years and years working with using masking tape in the band instrument repair field and and my goal eventually is to do plan some hour and a half long nappert style clinic where i just walk in with a <laughs> roll of masking tape <laughs> okay. And I just go over just tips, and I just shotgun blast everybody with masking tape tips. Awesome. Let's talk, so, let's let's show them some of the masking tapes that you have. So there we go. Available. Here it is. This could be yours. That's right. Hashtag masking taper ulez. That's what I'm saying. Right there. <laughs> Put it in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe. Click the bell. A uh, couple things. So masking tape. Okay. Typically used for masking things off when you're doing some painting. They have the blue painter's tape. I've even seen green. I think I've seen yellow as well. Oh, really? Yes, multiple colors. Well, I'm colorblind, but I can only assume that that gives off the essence of green and blue. So, uh, but no, painter's tape, we've used that as well. Um, we like it again because it's blue, music medic blue. Um, but we have a couple different types. The thickness is a uh, another consideration depending on what you're using it for. Um, the width as well. Some are a little bit wider. So I know we used to have some, some thicker ones, some thinner ones. In fact, I was, Richard, we were talking earlier, I have my secret stash of yes. masking tape that I, yes. I, I, there are certain particular ones that I don't want everybody to use or look at. So I stash them away and I hide them in a place and I've hidden them so good that not even I could find them. <laughs> So uh, imagine, if you will, some of these masking tapes are a little bit thinner. I think I, uh, maybe a half inch, uh, you know, uh, thickness. Okay. Um, and I also do have some thicker ones, you know. Wider. About, but wider, yes. Yeah. About that much wider. My favorite uh, masking tape is this stuff right here. It is the Scotch. If we want to go to this camera. Uh, sure. No, let's go to this one. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Back to this one. <laughs> it's the Scotch. There it is right there. The Scotch 3M. 202. Yes. So you want to write that down if you're looking for um, uh, Christmas gifts for me. Uh, get me a roll of Scotch 
202, or just actually regular scotch. Would be, I would take a regular scotch rather than okay. masking tape. But this is the scotch 202, and this comes from me using it when um, we were doing some refinishing, masking, blasting. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But this is probably my, my favorite um, as far as all the masking tapes go. We have some other tapes we may talk about. There they were for a second. Okay. Um, of course, they can see it in the small screen, so I don't know why I did that. Uh, but we're going to talk about those possibly at the end. So All right. Let's... So, Ryan, let's get into it. What is the first set of uh, techniques, uh, tricks that you can do with masking tape? Tricks I can do. Watch. Here's one trick. Watch. My hand passes directly through it, and now it is stuck. Uh, so, no. Uh, again, some of these are going to be emergency temporary fixes. Okay. Uh, don't think of this using mask tape as a permanent solution to things. Okay. Um, it is a temporary. That's why it's meant to be easily taken off. It doesn't hopefully leave residue if you take it off in a period of time. If you leave it on for a long period of time, it will leave residue. So, um, okay. but one you can use it for is emergency clarinet tenon. Um, you know, cork. I guess. Yeah, there tenon cork. Um, again, had I had not been such a good hider of things, uh, I would have been able to find, I have some that is this thickness, and you can just wrap it around. You can even have the cork there, wrap it around one or two times, and then check your fit. Again, temporary repair. Yes. Until you can actually bring it into a tech or get the right supplies and do it yourself. So okay. temporary fix is tenon corks. All right, what's the next one? Next one would be sex neck corks. Okay, right. again, temporary repair, especially if you have the wider stuff, the wider rolls. You can just do a couple layers and then check your mouthpiece fit. You can use this stuff and just wrap it until you get your fit that you need. Again, temporary repair. We'll do this a lot of times when we're testing necks out in the shop mm -hmm. uh, or you know, overhauling horns before we finally put that uh, neck cork on. Okay. Which leads me to my next one, oh. which is probably the most important one. We almost forgot it last broadcast. Yes. Which is probably the, the main reason why I started using masking tape in the band instrument repair field. And I'm gonna use this stuff. Okay. Doesn't really matter. But I started using this when I was sanding neck corks, okay? Mm. And I will wrap a portion. In fact, a lot of times I will even go so far as to tape over, you can see there it is right there, tape over the octave key just in case I get a little happy with that sandpaper and all of a sudden I mm. go up. Okay? okay. All it takes is one swipe and now you've got a scratch in your neck. Yes. Okay. Uh, all it took is three seconds for me to wrap masking tape around here, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing neck corks for years. I still, to this day, will wrap this up just because, okay? Um, so protective when you're actually sanding your neck corks uh, for saxophones. Okay, very good. So that's kind of a shop use. Uh, yes. What's another temporary use? Temporary use, let's see here. Ah, perfect. Let's say you have a saxophone you're working on here, okay? And you're trying to determine the material thickness on your back bar and your top stack. Okay, mm -hmm. what goes underneath the feet, what goes on top, as far as your regulation materials. Um, we use in the Pro Shop Tech Core. So mm -hmm. it comes in a variety of different thicknesses, and these are in millimeters, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 1.0, 1.2, 1.5, all the way up to, I think, 2.6, sure. 2.5, sorry. Okay, but what you can do to determine, rather than taking a guess or put, using a thicker piece of material, is you can take a strip of masking tape, assuming I can find the end here, tear off a long strip, I cut it in half, and I just stack it on top of each other until I can get the thickness of material that I want. So I'll just keep stacking, put it on my cutting block here. And how many times you stack it will determine, obviously, the thickness, and then you can cut a little piece of temporary material. And now you can use this under your key foot. And it's yes. nice because, again, it's sticky. I can use it, stick it right to the key. Uh, let's say it's too much material. I can actually go and peel off one layer, two layer to mm. kind of get whatever thickness. I can stick it back on. And then I can determine, okay, it's going to be about this thickness. I can grab my digital calipers, measure this guy. And this is coming out to 0. 0, uh, sorry, 0. 0.64 millimeters. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I would use maybe 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.7 yes. tech cork. Um, and again, this can also be used, this is kind of in the shop use. This can also be used as temporary materials. 
So okay. if they're on the gig and they've got the, their palm key cork falls off. Yep. Yep. Just take a couple thicknesses of this. That way you don't have that annoying clack and click when you're playing. So yes. emergency uses, shop uses. Okay. And then you have your, your cutting block. There. Cutting block here. Yes. Use for that? I use this quite a bit when I'm putting materials on and I don't want to get my contact cement everywhere. You can see this one's kind of, it's kind of rough looking. It's been used. Before. It's been used a few times. So I will save one side for cutting and I will save the other side for my gluing and I will protect the surface with a little bit of masking tape. And that way when I put my material there and I want to mm -hmm. add my glue, you can see I can just put it on all haphazard, stick this wherever. And then when this is done, I can now peel that off and I have a nice clean bench block and I can just throw that away. Very good. Or save it for another day. Okay, so Ryan, so, those, those are the temporary fixes. What about uh, shop uses? Another shop use here, you guys that are using sandpaper, let's say you're sanding under your key foot or you need to sand material and you need to put this between the body and the foot and pull this out. Mm -hmm. um, and you're worried about maybe some, some sandpaper stuff getting embedded in the back or whatever, you can use a little bit of masking tape. Look at this. Mm -hmm. And you can tape up the back of your sandpaper and now it's a little bit smoother well and paper does have a grit it does so yep. Yep. so that will make it much smoother yep. very cool so there we go okay and what are some other shops uses shop uses we've got materials bench blocks ah shop use that we really like using them and and for uh their tuning and toning process of our uber halls in the shop uh calls for putting cork crescents in Okay. Uh, if you're not familiar with the core crescent, it's basically installed inside the tone hole. It's a small sliver. Looks like essentially a crescent. Mm -hmm. Crescent roll, crescent moon. Yes. Um, but it's glued in there, and that essentially helps the tuning. It brings that note down. Um, we probably have a couple other videos on our, our YouTube channel about that. But rather than taking this key off, putting a core crescent in, putting it back on, testing it, taking the key off, adjusting for a crescent, what I can do is I can use just a strip of masking tape. Okay, and I can, let's say I'm, I'm working on this key right here and I'm, I'm thinking about put a crescent in. I can stick this in between the tone hole, sticky side towards the tone hole. And I can cover just a little bit of what I need. Let's see, right about there. All right, let's see if I can get a good shot of that. Can you see? Oh yeah. See how it's covered just the top portion of that tone hole. And now that thin layer, the pad will still for the most part, seal, and I can test this out mm -hmm. to determine, okay, well, it, it's lowered it too much or not enough. I can then go and take that masking tape and either move it down or I can move it up, okay? Um, and then looking at how much was covered on the masking tape will let me know how big of a crescent to make. So okay. you can see a very specific shop use. I like it. What the about... Sex Pro Shop, tuning and toning. Now, what about uh, some sort of engraving uh, or finishing. Yes. So I don't know why I put this back. This is a great example of if you have a simple roll of masking tape, you can do this to a sense. Okay. You can just put it right on top. It just lays right. No, but you can do this, this refinishing work to it. Um, okay. this was done here in the Sax Pro Shop mainly by Jeff. I had a little hand in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the engraving and then I did the masking of this. And if you look at this finish, this was done by us and it's a media blasted. So it's kind of a textured finish, but you can see certain areas. This brace right here is shiny and smooth. Mm. This body band, shiny, smooth. Bogard, shiny, smooth. You can see inside the engraving itself, all the different separations. You can even see this little guy right here has a separation within mm -hmm. a separation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, essentially what you see here on the body, everything has been covered with masking tape during the blasting process. So everything was kind of shined up. Uh, it was engraved and then it was outlined. Ma layers of masking tape was applied to it. They were cut out, meticulously cut out. Yes. Um, cause there are quite a bit, even on the back here, you can see there's some more engraving that was cut out. Um, and then when it's in the, the media blasting cabinet and, and sprayed, everything that's covered up remains shiny and smooth. Okay. You can see body bands we have here. We have the strap ring here we have the receiver the tenon a couple areas on the neck key the underside neck brace so all those areas were masked off uh and they were masked off using this stuff right here now ryan can they also use that on other instruments like say if you're doing engraving work on like a trumpet bell or yes yep yeah okay very cool absolutely 
So but, that's uh, uh, sandblasting and engraving. What about, talk about the buffing. Buffing, yes. You can use it for, for buffing as well. If you want to mask certain areas off, let's say you're working on a horn like this and you need to cover, maybe you're working on the strap ring. Okay. You can actually cover, you can see there we are. So I can mask off this. If I need to maybe buff this up, if I've soldered this back on, I can buff it up. I can do lacquering on it. And then I can peel everything away and the surrounding areas are protected. So we use this quite a bit in the buffing process as well. Okay, so we've got some buffing. And I see you have a buffing glove I there. I do have a buffing glove. Yes. And sometimes, those of you that wear buffing gloves, hopefully you are, both hands, safety first. Okay, sometimes, as you can see, what happens is you get one of these where the Buffing will actually just rubs through the glove, so you know you get a little peekaboo, <laughs> fingerless glove here. Um, but until you can buy a new one, there is a again a temporary fix with you guessed it masking tape. Oh, very nice. Yep. Tape up your glove. That's right. Somebody watching there is like, I knew he was going to say masking tape. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's in the title. It's in the title. Using masking tape in the bandage repair. So now I can extend the life of these gloves for maybe one or two more buffing sections uh, before I get them, uh, you know, get a new pair. Okay. So, but there you go. Buffing gloves. Yeah. What about some other shop uses? Uh, how about drilling? Like drilling a oh, flat spring screw. Yes, drilling. Let's say I need to. Maybe not on this guy if I had the correct joint for a clarinet. Maybe I'm, I'm installing a right-hand thumb hook and I need to drill new holes. I, I heard it's probably a bad thing if you drill all the way through a clarinet. It is bad. Okay, good. I yes. thought so. I thought so. <laughs> you are correct. I am correct, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Ha-ha. You are correct, sir. Um, so let's say you don't want to drill into a clarinet because you probably don't. Mm -hmm. You can control the depth. It's a visual gauge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Put it so just a little bit of that drill bit. Everybody see that right there? Look, mm -hmm. I just got a little bit of that drill bit sticking through that way when I drill mine. Obviously, this is way too big to be drilling for right hand thumb hooks. Everybody calm down. Yes. Keyboard warriors. Take it easy. Okay, yes. everybody just simmered down. Okay. But now you can drill, or if you're drilling in whatever on the lathe, on the bench motor, um, now you're drilling only a certain depth. Now you're not having to worry about going all the way in. And the nice thing about masking tape is it is removable. Very cool. So, so that's drill bit depth. Yes. How about for pads or padding? Pads and padding, yes. Like we mentioned in the February 8th, there it is right there. Dry fitting and padding. I'm going to talk about some uses of masking tape. It's very handy in the dry fitting and the padding world. Mm -hmm. um, dry fitting essentially is, you know, we assemble the instrument. It doesn't have the real actual pads in it. I just grab a set of what I call dummy pads. I just stick them in and I assemble the instrument and I'm manipulating the keys, making sure they're, they're dry fit properly over the tone hole, all that fun stuff. Sometimes what happens is you can see they fall out mm. uh, and that can be a pain. So what I will do is take a little bit of, you guessed it, masking tape. Masking tape rules. Yes, okay. masking tape. Rules. <laughs> so uh, put a little bit of, you see how I folded that upon itself and now I can stick that in and now it's not going to fall out. And I can finish up my dry fitting. And the nice thing is I didn't glue it in, so I can pop this guy back out. And when it comes time to install my pad, there's nothing I have to don't have to clean or anything like that. Okay. Because it's already clean. Very so, good. So, Ryan, those yes. are some of the masking tape rules. What are the other oh, tapes that you use in the shop? Other tapes. I have two tapes you can definitely call tapes, and one you may not call tape, but I'm lumping it in here because... I can. Okay. Uh, so you're not going to stop me. Yeah. No. This stuff right here, this is our blue monster tape. This is a blue tinted Teflon tape. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the white plumber's tape. Mm -hmm. um, that's okay. Um, but, you know, things will pick up and you'll get some of this stuff someday. Okay. But this is really nice. It's a little bit thicker than the standard uh, plumber's Teflon tape. Yes. Uh, we sell it. And it is great for piece neck corks mm -hmm. it's also good for clarinet yes tenon corks just a little bit and that being teflon it's going to slide together and it's not going to gum up okay um so we'll use this sometimes and you can see if you're maybe a player that has two different mouthpieces you use on the same neck uh and they have different uh, you know shank you know inner diameters you can use a little bit of this stuff rather than using the old dollar bill trick you can still use masking tape but get yourself some blue monster tape yes you know now, the envy of your neighborhood. So you put a dollar bill between the neck and the I've, mouthpiece? I've, I've seen that, yeah. I've seen oh, people using yeah, dollar bills. Take your tip money. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. So 
There's that one. And then what is the other, the, the larger roll? The larger roll, this guy, boom, right here. This is, uh, I think a common name is Nitto Tape. Okay. Uh, I think that might be a brand name like Q-Tip or Dumpster or Kleenex or whatever else. So, uh, but this stuff is a basically a protective film that you can get and you can mask off keys or body sections and it has a very low tack. Um, so you can leave this on for almost an extended period of time, peel it off and it's not going to uh, you know, leave any residue. Um, same thing with masking tape, although this stuff is maybe a little bit neater looking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and it's basically clear protective tape. Um, I've seen a lot of flute technicians tend to use this. They'll wrap the body of the flute. And yes, I know this is a clarinet, <laughs> but they'll wrap the, wrap the body of the flute. So that way when it's on their bench, if they have a drill bit or razor blade or whatever, um, that it won't scratch it up. So this stuff is great, uh, for protective, uh, another thing. Which is not necessarily tape, but it's oh. this stuff right here. And we I've actually, don't tell them, but I've, I've taken this from the shipping and supply side. <laughs> this is basically just clear film. It's almost like saran wrap. Yes. As you can see, it, it's just a thinner, uh, you know, roll. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I will use this for is when I'm doing neck corks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've applied my neck cork. Uh, I've, I've trimmed it a little bit. I've maybe sanded just a little bit. And I want that glue to really cure... So I have a secure, uh, you know, connection between my uh, neck cork and the actual neck itself. I will use this and wrap this around a few times. And what this does, this just provides just a little bit of tension and oh. it just keeps that neck cork applied. And then I'll sit this off to the side for, I don't know, half hour, do some other stuff, okay. take a break, do whatever, come back. Then you can just peel this off and then go about your business. So it's like a natural clamp. Exactly, a, well, yes. Plastic clamp. Yeah, plastic clamp. Yep, exactly. Just to kind of keep that, that neck cork to ensure that it adheres to your actual neck itself. So Very good. Hold there's, on. I'm sure, other uses for this as well. You, you, you use this for, you know, wrapping up tools when we go on trade shows and whatnot. So it has quite a bit of other uses as well. You can also use just regular saran wrap. So you don't yep. have to buy this. Shrink wrap. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yep, Very cool. saran wrap, whatever. So there you go. Excellent. Ryan, yeah. thank you for that amazing demonstration of masking tape. I, I want to say our hashtag winner. I'm not sure if I did in the beginning. Uh, the hash, so make sure you take that hashtag masking tape rules. Put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win one of our Oleg key risers that are discontinued. And let me get to that screen so nope. they can see it. Uh, that is, these are discontinued, and we're going to give one of these away next week if you put masking tape rules in the comments below. Uh, that's also going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up. And the winner for this week is, it's a head username, and this is a fun one, uh, Skittles and Scrick. Skittles and Scrick. Skittles and Scrick. Congratulations. Skittles and Scrick. Whoever you are, uh, send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com. I will get you your discount code. And next week, we will do the drawing for the Oleg Key Riser. So Skittles and Crick, send me an email to rich at musicmedic.com. We're going to be back next week with Leroy. We're going to go over clarinet topic. This is a viewer requested video. This is how to install uh, pads in the lower section or the bottom joint of the clarinet specifically those four large pads these ones down here this yeah. is the top joint down in these ones area. down here okay very good all right guys so that's going to do it for now uh make sure you put masking tape rules in the comments below like share subscribe all that good stuff we're going to get out of here until next time happy repairing